listening to this gospel worship. Uh, though everything might not be going right, but it went right enough to get us back in this house once more and again. So if it's going to get better, it's only going to be by the grace of God. This morning, I'm driving in and seeing other things that made me want to quote the words of the song. It could have been me. Uh -huh. Outdoors. No food. My Lord. No clothes. Or all, all alone. Without a friend. Or just another number with the, ah, with the tragic end. Mm. But he did see fit. Nine, hey, nine, nine. To let none of these things be. Thank you, God. Thank you. By your power, you keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on keeping me. Yeah. I just got to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Woo, thank you Lord. Thank you. For all you've done for me, you do know we ain't special. Oh, by the grace of God. Amen. It could be us on the prayer list. Mm -hmm. God it could be us somewhere not knowing our name or where we are, but God is a keeper. Yes, sir. And God just got to excuse me, give me two seconds yes. just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ooh, we serve a good God. Yes, sir. Oh, we always remember no matter what's going on in your life. Yes, sir. It's always a It's always a great time to praise yes, the Lord. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Jeremiah chapter 18. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 12. So don't let me get too cute to praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Bless you. I know it's said a lot, but sometimes oh, yes. you just got to T-H-I-N-K. Uh -huh. So you can T-H-A-N-K. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 2. And the reads, the, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will call to thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, people are working on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was more in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. And at what instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turns from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and plant it. If it do evil in my sight, if it, it obeys not my voice, then I will repent of the good, but with I said I will benefit them. Now therefore, go to speak to, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I pray evil against you, and devise the vice against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. And we and then we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. And may the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Just for a little while, I'd just like to converse with you all about the things that can happen in God's hands. The things that can happen in God's 
hands. Hands are very important. You think of the hands of a Mike Tyson, who go down as one of the greatest boxers to ever go inside the ring. You think about the hands of a Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Through those hands, we are one of the most technological countries on the face of the earth. Think about the hands of a Emmy Smith or a Drew Brees, great football players that can score the football for you and hopefully take your team to a winning season. Praise the Lord for those hands, but what about God's hands? Some of us would like to be in the hands of our boo and our babe, but what about God's hands? Mm-hmm. Our hands have held our children from the time that they were infant, and I've heard they, they uh, as they get older, they get off your knee and they start laying on your heart. What about God's hands? Right. We live in a world now that we tend to forget that we are all in God's right. hands. We started learning about that from the youth. Uh, we sang a song when we were in. He's a God of Sunday school. He got the whole world in his, in his hands. You and me, brother, he got the whole world in, in his hands. hands. And because we're not in kindergarten, Sunday school no more, don't change that we're all still in God's hands. Let me ask a question. Who can tell you what to do with your own stuff? Don't worry, I'll wait. Miss Brittany, they come to your house tell you how to cook your food, how to drive your car, how to love your man. You're going to say, wait, 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 wait. Mm-hmm. This is my house. This is my car. This is my kitchen. This is my husband. I'll do and, 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 and love the way that I want to because it's mine. Mm-hmm. I know you think it's somebody at the highest point, at the highest pivot of your life, you will steal God's property. No matter how good, how bad, how pretty, how ugly, how fat, how small, we're all still God's property. He can do with us however, whatever he wants to. And sometimes what he's done is not what we want him to be doing. We don't want him to have us in a season of financial crisis. We don't want him to have us somewhere with our heart broken and our head down. But God has the right to do with us whatever. You might not have felt like you deserved cancer, but God gave it to you. You, 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 didn't, you weren't ready for mom and dad and sister and brother to pass away, but God took them from us. And guess what? Can't nobody question it. Your arms ain't big enough. You, you ain't tall enough. You, you just got to go with what thus said the Lord and whatever his will is for your life. You got to take it. That's when you find out where your faith lies. All of us can have faith on a sunshiny day. Uh-huh. All of us can have faith that God just placed us on beaches and gave us my ties and sit up under an umbrella all day. We'll love the Lord until the day we die. Yeah. But what happens when the rain comes in over your beach? Yeah. What happens when the wind comes in and blowing sand in your face? Can you still be happy to be God's property? Yeah. What about God's hand? We, 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 when we look at TV and news and social media and, and Facebook and Twitter, we, 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 we wonder, is God still around? Mm. When we look at murder and, and father and son and mother and daughter, God, are you around? But he said he's around. Yeah. And in Revelation, he said this stuff was going to happen. He said this ain't nothing but birth pain. Yeah. God still got his hands on everything, but what are you going to do in his hands? Right here, we see Jeremiah. He's right to Israel. He's trying to get Israel to turn around. Mm-hmm. And that's the cry of every preacher, every Christian, every saint to the world. We are here to try to get the world to turn around. Mm-hmm. Broad is the way yeah. that leads to destruction. That's why you see so many people. Only the narrow is the way yeah. that leads to life. And sometimes you might look around for miles and miles. You don't see nobody but yourself. But keep on walking. Because you in God's hand. Yeah. And, he, and, and God sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house. Mm-hmm. And tried to give him a description of how Israel is in his hands. Mm-hmm. The potter sits at the wheel and make that thing spin. And 
He can choose to make whatever he wants to. It's his clay, mm -hmm. it's his hands, it's his will, it's his materials. If I want to make a trash can, I'll make a trash can. But if I want to make a vase, I'll make a vase. I'll do whatever I want to because the clay is in my hands. Mm -hmm. And that's how we try to steer our children when they're young. They're playing in our hands, so we try to give them the Lord. We try to make sure they go to school and do their work and everything because we know once they get about 15, 16, 17, the clay's too hard. <laughs> It's too hard to try to mold them at 15. That the clay already hard. You got to get them by his own. Train up a child in the way that he or she should go. So when they are old, and we got to the point where some parents went to the clay, get too hard to try to train the child. You spend too, too much time trying to be that baby's friend. Oh, that ain't your friend. That's your child. One day they got to leave your house and somebody else got to put over their children. And everybody ain't going to love them like you love them. That's why I feel the suicide rate is so high because we let our kids think they're the best thing smoking. Until they get out there and find out they ain't the best thing smoking. And they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. I'm not dead. They ain't going to be no longer. They ain't going to be no matter how high you achieve, you're just going to be all of us man with son. So I don't care how high the Lord take me, I can keep myself up because I was trained up young. And that's the word to some of you grandparents. You got to get to some of you, hey, Oh, man. 
ain't trying to scare you. The story is a strong word, but we serve a strong God. And don't think for one second some of the stuff we see going on in America ain't because God has turned his happiness into a fire. Mm -hmm. This is a movie that uh, I like to watch called Long Jaw, and it got a big old guy on the name uh, Sal. He plays a defensive tackle. He's a very friendly guy. Big old boy. Very friendly. They was playing the last game, and uh, another character on that name, he's Nelly, he goes to tell him what happened to him in the library. A couple of the guards called him in bar. So he went to old Big Sal. Usually when he on the line, he's waving at you. But on this play, he balled his fist. <laughs> a big old gentle giant, until he got some information that made him mad, he went from waving to he put his fist up. And that's what Christ done for America. He been waving at us a long time, and we keep on messing up, and now he putting his fist up. And what can you do when you fight somebody you can't beat up? You can't see, you can't touch, you ain't wild enough, you ain't strong enough. What can you do when God wants to destroy you? Woo! He'll get you. You, you pray all the time and you look it. Hey, and he book it. Because you're getting by don't mean because you're getting by don't mean you're getting away. And that's what happens. Since it's not no immediate. Uh, there's no immediate consequence when things we got by. Mm -hmm. But we serve a God that lives outside of time. Mm -hmm. He got your whole life to get you back. Right. And I've seen some people die some terrible deaths because they lived a horrible life. Mm -hmm. And God, all they got, kicked them off. He will destroy you. But what I'm happy about, but that's not the only side of it. Because point two is, not only can he destroy you, he can also, uh, he can also bless you. Not only in his hands can he destroy you, in his hands he can bless you. I must admit some things that I've enjoyed in life that is above my pay grade and above my brain. Because God in his hands can bless you. He can take you places you never thought you'd never go. He'll meet, you'll meet people you never thought you'd meet only because God will bless you. Look what he told him. He said, if you return to me, I repent of the evil that I thought towards you. God is God, so he doesn't have to repent of anything. But he's so much God and has so much grace and mercy that if you can turn around, I'll stop some of this stuff. I'll stop some of these killers in our homes. I'll stop some of these gangsters in our projects. I'll stop some of that if you turn. Mm -hmm. But we want the benefit without the burden. Mm -hmm. We want the benefit and not the burden. Come here, uh, St. Chronicles 7 14. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, no, uh, Matthew 6 33. If not people uh -huh. who will call by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Yeah. We got to do all the stuff in front of the end to get to after the end. Yeah. Now we ready for him to heal the land and, 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 and fix the fields and all of that, but we don't want to humble ourselves. Right. I don't know how people with our skin color can be so uppity when we know we came from nothing. We don't want to give nobody another chance. They mess up one time. We delete the number out the phone. Baby, somebody gave you a chance. God forgives me every day so I can have a little patience with you. But when we get down above the dollar, mm -hmm. move on the right side of the tracks in Jonesboro, I don't, what street is that? I mean, you grew up on that street. <laughs> That's why sometimes God don't bless us because we don't turn into somebody he don't like. Mm -hmm. That's why some people stay in that July. They, they don't ever get a new car. They, I will be from apartment to apartment because when I need some house, I'll give you some brick, you're going to be somebody else. He said, if you turn, I'll repent from the evil thoughts that I had towards you. Mm -hmm. But as I say that, we just read in verse 12. Mm -hmm. They said, ain't no more. And we're going to keep on doing whatever we want to do. Think about that with your child saying it to you. You said that. Still make sure they got 
got, I think I could. Make sure they got to the barber salon, or, or I mean the beauty salon, or, or make sure they still doing everything in school. You paying tuition, you, you can help them with a couple of life years. They tell you they gonna do what they want to do. Okay. Let me remember that number you called last time. Don't call them over. Go ahead, good guy. Handle it. Do your thing. And that's what Christ has said to some of us. Oh, okay. You got it, big guy. Shoot. You, you got it. Just knock it up off your knees. You don't need me no more. Because you just said you're going to do what you want to do. And I'm telling you that I'm going to get you. And you know what? There was some stuff I did when I was a child. People don't get a woman for but I, I, I kept it to the realization that I was going to have more fun doing it, so I just take the woman anyway. But that's a woman for mama. Mm. I ain't trying God like that. Right. I, I know if I did look crying and move around a little bit, mama stop. And I go on like, well, it was worth it. But can you say that to God? Right. Can you say whatever it is that you indulge me in is worth missing heaven? If that little fun in the 27 minutes of the little uh, trip around the corner, is it worth missing heaven? He, he built these people from the ground up. Israel started with one cat. He changed his name and told him he don't have as many offspring as the, as the stars in the sky. Uh -huh. He went in with like 20 to 40 people and left Egypt over a million strong. All because of the hand of God. And then he, he took most of the scene, brought Joshua on, led him into the promised land, and ever since they got there, they have messed it up. Because God got our attention when we in trouble. He had the attention because he was to put a cloud by day and put a fire by night, because if he wasn't there, he'd be lost. They didn't know they was on. Mm -hmm. And then Christ, even in that, when Moses went up the hill to go get the Ten Commandments, he cut his brother building a calf. They fresh out of Egypt. That's why I don't mind serving the God that I serve because if I was God, half the Bible wouldn't have been wrote. Half the Adam and Eve would have been over. I don't know if you're from the feeling that it's going to be out about our business. But he's so merciful. He's so graceful. He gives us chance after chance after chance to try to get it right. Israel has put their thing in God's face for 27 books. And he still loves them. He still cares for me. And y'all have relationships like that, that joke with that, that, that friend that you know to keep him a little nervous, but you keep letting him back in because you love him. And everybody around you like, why are you still around that person? They just played the last week and did the last year, but I love him. And as I've been talking, I've been married, the heart wants, what the heart wants in God, heart wants us. So he put up with a lot of stuff just to love us. And all he wants to return is to say thank you and walk serve respectfully to his word. And in verse 12 they say we ain't doing it. It ain't no folk. You can preach all the service you want. You can quote all the scriptures you want. We don't want to turn. But God has a way of putting you in a position the only way he can turn is up and say Lord help because I know what I said, but I don't mean to help me. Please help me. Yeah. And God will, he will forgive the evil yeah. thoughts that he had towards you. Yeah. In God's hands, he can destroy you. He can bless you. Yeah. And I leave with this question. What do you want God to do for you? 